Hello everyone, welcome back to JK Dentis. Today, I am going to explain you about NT's law and NT-NT's law. This topic is very important for practitioners as well as students of dentistry. To understand the topic, we will first have to take idea of mechanics. Let's consider about the bridge. So in the first condition, you will see there is a bridge of having support at a distance of 5 meters loaded by load L. In the second condition, there is bridge at a distance of 10 meters loaded by same load L. But when you will consider the bending moment in the first condition, it is very less. While the bending moment in the second condition has increased exponentially. Why this has happened in the second condition and why not in the first? As flexor is directly proportional to the cube of distance. When you calculate the cube of 5, flexor seems to be 125. But as the distance between the support has increased and now the distance is 10, the flexor has also increased exponentially. So the takeaway could be as the distance between the support increases because of the flexor our bridge will get collapsed. We require adequate support and less flexor. So our topic will revolve around two main conditions that is support and flexor. Now we will consider NT's law. The NT's law says that the total perisemental area of the abutment teeth should be equal or greater than the teeth we are replacing. We will see this with an example. To explain the NT's law, we will consider Jepsen chart. Jepsen has given a chart in 1963 about the surface areas of the teeth. So surface areas have already been calculated. Now we will try to correlate NT's law with the Jepsen chart. So when we will calculate the area of second molar and second premolar, it seems to be 634. And when we will calculate the surface area of the first molar, it seems to be 431. So 431 is less than the second premolar and second molar. That means in this condition, NT's law is being satisfied and we are getting adequate support and less flexor. Now, we will see second example. In the second condition, there is second premolar and first molar is missing. Now, with the reference to the Jepson chart, when we will calculate the surface area, the surface area of the first premolar and second molar is approximately equal to the surface area of the pontix. So this condition also satisfies the NT's law. Here also we will get adequate support and less flexor. But in the third condition, we are getting support from only two teeth that is canine and second molar. And missing teeth is first premolar, second premolar and first molar. When we will take reference of the Jepson chart, the surface area of the replacing pontic will be more. So in this case, we will get more flexor and less support. So this condition is not satisfying NT's law. So what we can do? We can take support from adjacent teeth or we can place implants for adequate support and to avoid flexor in our fixed partial denture assembly. There are factors which affects NT's law. If the periodontal condition of the roots are not good and when there is bone loss, we should take extra support. When the root configuration is not proper, when we have a separated root, we should also take support. And if the occlusion is not proper, Again, there is one more condition that affects the NT's law that is the crown root ratio. In this, we will see again an example. I will try to explain this example with the help of lever principle. So, 
the bone area at the junction of crown and root is considered as a fulcrum the crown area is considered as a effort arm and the root area is considered as the resistance arm but when there is bone loss our fulcrum gets downwards so in this case the effort arm has increased and your resistance arm has decreased so the teeth can get easily moved when forces are applied that means with very less amount of force the root can get affected or root can get weakened easily so minimal crown root ratio is considered as 1 is to 1 while the optimum is 2 is to 3 if you will have a crown root ratio of 2 is to 3 it will be considered as best for the consideration of fixed partial denture to understand the example completely you can also refer my uh, previous video of biomechanics i'll give the link in the description box now we will see what do you mean by anti nt's law in the anti nt's law we will consider example of anterior region in the anterior region there are less forces as we do not use anterior teeth for the purpose of mastication if in the opposite arch for example in the upper region there is removable partial denture and we need to give a fixed partial denture in the lower arch we can go for the fixed partial denture by the support of two canines because the forces by the rpd is very less that is about 26 lb and secondly canines have long and strong root which will support our assembly so this is an example of anti nt's law in this case only we can oppose the nt's law what will happen if nt's law is disobeyed in other conditions like in posterior case if you will disobey the nt's law in the posterior case there will be more masticatory forces and the support will not be adequate which will eventually lead to failure of fixed partial denture which we don't want so in short i would say we need adequate support and less flexor for a good fixed partial denture assembly so i would conclude this topic by saying to have a good fixed partial denture try to get adequate support and avoid flexor i hope you have understood the topic very well and you will be applying the same principles in your clinical practice thank you so much